Good morning, David Smith here with David Smith Radon. Uh, we're in central Illinois this morning performing a radon mitigation system on a relatively easy home. It's going to be what we call a garage exit. Uh, it's a fairly modern home. It has no crawl space, so uh, uh, it's a type of home we all wish we'd get uh, every day, all day. And uh, we've met with the consumer, uh, establishing a relationship with the consumer. We feel that's very important. Uh, the consumer can uh, be instrumental in getting you more jobs on his same block or with his friends if you create a relationship. So we think it's instrumental to have that relationship. And uh, Dan, uh, as you can see it behind me, Dan and the consumer have met. They, uh, they have talked about location. Uh, they've agreed on a location that both suits the radon mitigation and the consumer's design our desires and uh, Dan uh, as you can see Dan has just run a uh, probe bit um, this bit comes in very handy you can do all the measurements in the world that you want but we'll drill this bit before we drill a big hole uh, once again the consumer and Dan have met they've decided this is a great location it works for both of us Dan has run his probe bit and so now he's ready to start uh, drilling the holes for the pipe to go through. Well, we're down in the basement now. Uh, as you saw, uh, Dan was uh, drilling the hole up in the garage to get to the basement, and here he is in the basement starting to run his first piece of piping. Uh, this particular home uh, being what we call the garage exit, uh, we're going to put our hole right below here in this nice little utility area. Uh, good area to do it. It's not going to be finished uh, by the consumer. And once again, the consumer and Dan spent some time discussing design. Uh, this is a home that could have been done very readily as a garage exit or an exterior system. Uh, there are mechanicals behind a chimney that would have allowed it to be done exteriorly very well also. Our policy is to keep it interior whenever you can. There's certainly plenty of discussions about interior versus exterior. Uh, we think in our part of the country, uh, we get a lot more jobs by providing the interior for the aesthetics alone. Had we chosen the exterior route, uh, here's the place it would have went. As I said, there's a chimney here to hide it behind. It's the backyard, the air conditioning unit sitting out there. Uh, had the garage not been an a, a, a option, this would have been an excellent, uh, excellent area to do an exterior system. This being a modern home, we got lucky in the, in the respect that we thought the sump lid, the sealed sump lid that was already on the basin, was very usable. Uh, what Brian is doing right now is he's cleaning up the edges, removing some of the excess concrete that happened during the, uh, during the original construction and he's going to create a better seal for this lid. The other thing about uh, lids that you're able to reuse, such as this, if we found many times uh, some of those gaskets are missing. As you can see with this one, the gasket for the electrical cord is missing. Uh, we keep them on the trailer at all times. Uh, that, uh, that gasket is, uh, is going to be used here in order to seal that hole. If you see the other hole there, it's very common for these type of lids to have a second hole for, uh, for uh, venting or for another uh, usage. We, we take advantage of that hole and enlarge it to five inches so that we can put a viewport in it. Uh, viewports are mandatory in our, uh, in our policy book. Uh, it's something we also think is a great selling tool. This happens to be the viewport that's going to go in this project. And once again, oftentimes, when we get into a modern home like this, it has a, uh, a factory sump lid that is reusable. We simply use, uh, use the secondary hole to enlarge it for this viewport. So, yeah, I wanted to say a word about vacuum cleaners, too. Uh, we buy ours at Sears. Uh, we just find them highly effective for the uh, cost uh, we use a 6.5 horse vacuum cleaner, but above and beyond that, the, uh, the biggest thing about these vacuum cleaners is we, we uh, get rid of that filter that comes with them, and we buy HEPA filters. Uh, the HEPA filter will keep your environment much cleaner, 
Uh, the HEPA filter is a little bit pricey, but it is cleanable. And we find a HEPA filter will last long enough to, uh, to warrant the price. But the big thing is a HEPA filter will control all the dust. And so, uh, once again, uh, company policy, use a HEPA filter on all vacuuming appliances. So as you can see here, Dan's making some progress on his vertical stack, we would call it, uh, leading out to the garage. So now he's stubbed through the garage. He's anchored to the wall. Uh, right in front of Dan's elbow will probably be the manometer. Uh, in this case, in Illinois, the state sticker, manometer, and our labeling uh, to identify us as well. So uh, he's ready to uh, run his elbows down here in order to core drill the floor. And bear in mind, you have to stay back at least eight inches to miss the footing when you core drill the floor. So uh, all of, he's already got his X made. He's getting ready to, uh, after he uh, puts the insulation back in the box sill, uh, make his elbows and then he'll be moving up to the garage and continue building the system. Typically in a, in a uh, modern home, in our part of the country at least, uh, before the floor is poured, the plumbers, uh, we call it a rough in, I know the plumbers call it a rough in, the plumbers will create a, uh, a place here that won't get filled with concrete. They'd simply form up approximately 12 inches worth of forming uh, for a future bathtub. So typically in our part of the country, uh, during construction, there's a, uh, there is a rough in, we call it, for a future, uh, a future bathroom. However, typically this is open to gravel, and so it must be dealt with. And you need to remember, these are not treated lumber, so uh, they are a termite attractant. So the first thing we do is take a flat bar and a hammer and remove the forms and then typically we take uh, quarter inch ABS plywood similar to uh, sump lid material. We put a label on the back that says David Smith Radon on it to sort of alert the plumber if this does get activated. We clean it up and we simply glue and, uh, and screw the lid to the floor because this is a very, uh, a very open source <coughs> for radon to enter. It must be sealed if possible. But we also know it could be accessed later for that bathroom. And, uh, and so the label on the back, we think, might help. Uh, it has our phone number on it. might help the plumber to call us and, and ask us what's going on. In this particular case, uh, the consumer, on, on our meeting with the consumer, they said this is the next project. As soon as the radon is done, so is a bathroom being done. And so we've advised them on uh, what the plumber needs to do once he uses this. Uh, we're going to do a temporary seal on it, knowing the plumber's going to be here uh, in a very short amount of time. We've offered to come back and inspect it uh, as that plumber's doing his work. As you can see, Brian has enlarged that hole we spoke about. He has included the, uh, uh, the gasket for the uh, electrical cord, and now he's about to install that viewport we spoke of. Uh, it makes a pretty clean uh, installation when he can do that. He'll probably do a little bit more of cleaning up this lid. They typically get pretty, uh, uh, pretty bad during the concrete pour. Uh, and so he probably will do a little bit more cleanup. But other than that, he is, uh, he's sealed. He's screwed down to the, uh, to the uh, basin now. And after he cleaned the concrete out, he's added the screws to seal it well. He's added a viewport. He's uh, added the uh, electrical gasket. Every, every job has a checkoff list, and uh, Brian will check all the, all the connections, all the gaskets. He mechanically worked that sump to make sure it was in good working order before he even started. But now a, a second person will come around with a checkoff list, and he'll recheck everything that Brian did as he was installing it. And so our records have a uh, I have two people signing off on every sump. So the second person verifies that the sump's in working order and that all, uh, all uh, gaskets and all uh, are in place and that all nuts and bolts have been tightened uh, on, the, um, on the rubber fern coats. So uh, it's just another thing to uh, be careful of your, uh, of your liabilities because sumps are very temperamental. And uh, if you, if you want to see how we word that label, we laminate it, we attach it to the uh, 
pipe. Uh, if you want to see the wording that we use, feel free to call us and we'll, we'll uh, send you a copy of that. Brian's going through that label now. He's filling out some information that's included with that label. Uh, as I've said, we use a, a zip tie to tie it on the pipe uh, right above the, uh, the level of the uh, sump. And uh, if, you're, if you're curious about the language we use, uh, uh, feel free to call us. Uh, uh, and as I say, there'll be a second person uh, checking off on this sump uh, so that we have uh, verification that we've, we've, we've let them know it's a mechanical item. We have checked the sump uh, with two different people uh, and that is in good working order as we're uh, completing our work. It's very visible, it's, it's large, it's, it's sitting there uh, ready to be uh, ready to be observed at any time. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the caulking and sealing. I uh, can't overemphasize how important caulking is. Uh, we call this item a roller skate and what Nick's trying to do now is, um, is clean out the joints that are uh, uh, we, our saw cuts for expansion joints. So uh, most every modern home has uh, saw cuts but it uh, doesn't take long for them to get filled with uh, uh, debris and dirt, but and so it has to be cleaned out in order for caulk to have a place to go. And so Nick runs along with this roller skate. It's actually a mason's tool that at least used to be used a lot for cleaning joints between bricks. So you can buy these things at any uh, contractor that has a that has a, a mason equipment. It's a kind of a neat little tool that uh, you can hook a pipe onto it so you don't have to get on your knees, but it's a nice little tool to clean out those joints. Also, as soon as he gets these cleaned out, he's, gonna, he's going to sweep and, uh, and, uh, and then fill it with caulk. And you can, uh, you can uh, judge the depth that you want to, uh, to pull out because the nail that's within this system, the mason nail in this roller skate, is adjustable. And so uh, you don't have to fill a hole any deeper than it needs to be filled and you can conserve on some caulk that way. So he's going to clean this joint now just simply by sweeping and then he's ready to put his uh, uh, self, uh, self leveling caulk in this, uh, in this saw cut and as we know almost all construction now has, uh, <coughs> now has uh, these type of joints available. So. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, this roller skate is also good for other floor cracks uh, to clean the dirt out of them. But especially the saw cuts, uh, it's very valuable on them. And as you can see, uh, automatic caulk gun, a necessity in our opinion. <laughs> the uh, hand caulk guns will uh, beat you to death uh, uh, wrist wise and, and ca cause a lot more labor. So. Uh, we've also tried uh, several different brands of caulk guns, uh, some of the certainly more expensive ones and more uh, common uh, brand names, but this caulk gun made by Ryobi is very inexpensive and the, by far the best one we've ever used. Uh, the other ones we've tried that were two or three times as expensive, uh, they, the guys simply uh, leave them on the shelf and use this Ryobi. So, it's available at your Home Depot stores uh, and as I said, the most effective uh, automatic caulk gun that we've ever used. Yeah, on the caulk subject, uh, bear in mind that uh, another important thing to caulk is the wall floor joint, we call it. Uh, always some shrinkage. Whenever you pour concrete, when the, uh, when the water evaporates from it, you're going to have some shrinkage. Uh, this one looks like a pretty tight one, but that doesn't mean there isn't some shrinkage. Uh, a lot of regulated states, Illinois included, requires that this joint be caulked. Uh, we go to, uh, to the extreme of moving, uh, moving uh, a lot of stuff in order to caulk this joint. We feel it's a very important uh, uh, for the finished product uh, to have this joint caulked. And once again, you can see how efficient it is to use the uh, automatic caulk gun to do that. And Nick's actually going to work that joint in uh, uh, as you can see once again. And so we put a lot of emphasis on caulking. We're convinced that, uh, uh, that uh, caulking is a big, uh, a big uh, uh, factor in the success of uh, radon system.
In this case, we're, we're working on a floor crack that uh, uh, most basements have floor cracks uh, that happened uh, on their own. Uh, expansion joints take care of a lot of that, but uh, Nick is going to, uh, to work on this floor crack uh, by spreading a polyurethane caulk on the crack and then using a putty knife uh, in, in order to try to level it off and work it in. Uh, once again, um, it's, it's, uh, it's important to seal these cracks. It is code in, uh, in many uh, regulated states and so uh, we, work, uh, we, we work, uh, work on these cracks and make it a priority to, do, uh, to doing a radon system. And, uh, uh, the putty knife works well. Uh, it's, uh, I think the more you do this, the better you get at it. And uh, as you can see, Nick's got it down to a science here. Go ahead. Uh, one thing to remember about the polyurethane caulks is they take about 24 hours to dry. So we always uh, 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 warn the consumer, if we don't see the consumer, we leave a written note. Uh, don't, don't walk on the polyurethane. Don't let your pets walk on the polyurethane for 24 hours because uh, the last thing you want is polyurethane caulk to get on carpet. So it's important, uh, we have it in our literature uh, that we leave with the consumer and we also try to verbally tell the consumer to keep themselves and their pets off of it for 24 hours. Uh, we're back out in the garage with Dan. Uh, as you can see, Dan's done his uh, work down low with his elbow. He's uh, come back to the, uh, uh, to the wall with the pipe to keep it behind the consumer's shelving. He's drilled through the garage uh, ceiling and he's into the attic of the garage. Uh, one other thing we do is we put a trim ring as it goes into the garage. That's a snap-on trim ring that, uh, that helps uh, aesthetically. Not, in, not necessary, but it's good for the aesthetics of it. I uh, wanted to point this out. In, in our opinion, this is a must-have tool. It's a camera. Uh, in most residential applications, it's not necessary. Uh, one of the, for instance, is when we used it doing some apartment buildings where we were going through closet ceilings. Uh, you've got a finished floor above. You've got a drywall ceiling below. You've got 12 inches in between and you hate to drill the big hole until you know what's behind it. Uh, there's, there's times in every mitigator's uh, 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 world uh, that they wish they wouldn't have drilled a hole where they did. And this can buy you some time. You simply drill a 3 8 inch hole, you stick it in, you push the button, and you, and you get a visually see what's happening inside that hole. So a uh, very valuable tool. Uh, I wouldn't be without it. Uh, it doesn't get used a bunch, but when you need it, you need it. Uh, we talked a little bit about a cosmetic trim ring. It's something we carry on our shelves. Uh, very inexpensive. Uh, a lot of customers buy these things. Uh, we, we like to use them on the ceiling when we go through a garage. Uh, it just trims it out just a little bit nicer. And uh, if the uh, uh, if, if there's any chance at all that there's going to be any discoloration over the years happen around that pipe, uh, this uh, uh, gives you another inch of coverage on that. So here's the fan we're going to use and Dan's going to hop up into the garage attic as we talked before. This is what we call a garage installation. The neatest, cleanest uh, way we think to do radon. 80% of our installations are garage uh, uh, installations. However, uh, there's certainly uh, certainly a lot of merit for uh, uh, exterior systems also. Um, I just secured my three-inch pipe when I came through the attic uh, to the drywall ceiling. So I secured that to one of the existing uh, framing structures here. And I am now getting ready to glue my pipe on or make my horizontal run towards the back of the roof. Okay, so now that I have my pipe glued in in the attic, I'm going to run my horizontal member get it secured and mount my fan. I'm going to make my last secure point before I turn vertical. All right, so now the pipe's secured. Now the pipe's secured, I'm going to get ready to move on my 90 to mount my fan. So on this job application, um, the scuttle hole or the entrance to the attic happens to be right next to the fan. Um, 
It doesn't always work out that way, but in this instance, it's gonna work out really good because thing has to be serviced down in the road. Um, it's right next to the scuttle hole to get into. So you can see coming off my fan, I have a six foot extension cord. This cord is six feet uh, because Illinois code requires us to have our switch or an outlet within six feet of the fan to plug into. All right, so I'm now mounting my vertical piece to go through the roof. I'm gonna get it level, get it secured and make a mark to cut. Yeah, but sure. So right now I'm getting this can of glue cinched into the top of the fan. Purpose being, uh, when I'm cutting through the roof, I don't want any kind of debris falling down into the fan. So this is just a temporary way to block that stuff uh, from getting into it. The last thing I want to do before I get out of the attic is label my pipe with radon reduction stickers. This allows anybody to know getting into the attic this is a radon pipe, not a plumbing pipe. 20 years ago when we were experimenting with uh, how to drill a hole, we simply didn't like what was out there. We didn't like the dry core hammer type bits with the spline. We didn't like the core rigs that were available in those days. We rented everything uh, to try to try to uh, decide what we wanted to purchase and simply didn't like any of them. So I came up with this idea uh, of using uh, a clutched right angle drill. Now this is a big DW124 uh, drill by DeWalt and the clutch is, makes it very safe. Uh, extremely durable drill. Uh, at the time I would go to machine shops and have them make the adapter that would get me from that drill, from the Jacobs chuck of a drill, into the wet core bit. Once again, it's a wet core bit. Uh, for many years, or for some years, I had to pay machine shops to make this part and uh, it was quite pricey, but now it's available. Uh, that's nice. No more making it. Uh, once again, it's, it's gained so much interest that we, uh, we now carry this on the shelf uh, in the supply company uh, available as well as the, uh, the wet, five inch wet core bit. We've done a lot of experimenting with different core bits and different manufacturers. Uh, the one we carry, the one we use happens to be a Husqvarna. Uh, even uh, all these companies make different, uh, different core bits. This is the second best one they make as far as its ability to do the job. But we found it to be the most cost effective one because it lasts the longest. So um, once again, we're gonna do a demo of, uh, of Nick core drilling the hole with the method we use and the parts uh, are available from David Smith Radon. This piece of plywood you see here is simply a piece of three-quarter inch plywood. Uh, it's, it's a template. In other words, we tap con it to the floor uh, and we use it as a guide so that uh, when we start drilling, uh, the, uh, uh, the bit wants, uh, stays stabilized within this. It's just simply uh, a, a template to get us started. Nick will tap con that down over his X where, where he wants to drill his hole at and then after he gets about an inch deep he'll remove that, throw it back in the, uh, in the uh, box and uh, because now he'll have a, a hole to hold the bit in. As you can see, uh, we discussed before, uh, 
Nick uh, uh, Tapcon this platform to the floor in order to get him a guide. Uh, also, uh, you saw him using a, a, a half inch drill bit uh, in the rotary hammer drill. He simply drilled one hole to make sure he was off the footing and we didn't get any surprises because uh, sometimes you can get a surprise not knowing what the builder did in that area. So now he's ready to core drill and uh, it'll uh, be a unique experience to watch the way he core drills this hole. We typically drill an inch to an inch and a half at a time. At that time, we chisel it out and start the process again. Another place where the uh, uh, vacuum and the uh, uh, HEPA filter come in handy is right, as you can see right now. Once he gets his first inch and a half uh, uh, chiseled out, it makes a better reservoir for the water for the uh, for the uh, water core drill bit to work. So now he's going to re repeat the process he just repeated. He could remove the template at any time now because now he's got his cavity to work from. Typically, uh, we stop uh, three times to chisel out uh, the concrete. Uh, and as you can see, Nick's in his second uh, go around now. We can usually tell when it's time to do that uh, just based on the, uh, the friction of the, of the drill bit itself. So, as you can see, Nick's completely through the hole. This depth is uh, typical of what you would find residential. I think possibly about a half inch thicker than what we usually find. It looks to be uh, a good four inches thick. Uh, timing, I'll tell you what it took uh, for him to drill this hole. Uh, for those that are curious, um, it was um, exactly 15 minutes. Uh, to drill that hole from start to finish. Uh, that included putting a template down, but uh, so the only thing left in this situation is clean up and typically even in a newer construction we will remove uh, around five gallon of, uh, uh, of rock from under the floor just to create a nice reservoir for the radon to come to. And so uh, we're basically done. He's going to do a little more clean up. He's used his vacuum cleaner to take out approximately five gallon of gravel from under the floor. Uh, Dan has already pre-made the part that uh, fits into there, so it's just a matter of gluing in the, uh, the part that gets from A to B, caulking it in. Uh, then he's going to install his manometer, in this case the Illinois State sticker, and uh, do what labeling he needs to do, and, uh, and we're done. We're done in the basement function of this uh, process, and I hope it was uh, inter interesting uh, for you to see how we do uh, core drilling. Good. Uh, yeah, we spoke a little bit about uh, cleanliness too. Uh, our policy is to, to leave nothing for the consumer to clean up 
Here's an example, the tarps we put on any carpeted area. I spoke earlier of the HEPA filters we put in our vacuum cleaners. Uh, anything we can do to make it easier on the consumer. Uh, we get a lot of uh, uh, comments about how happy everybody was that we left the uh, area clean. All right, so one thing we did here before we put the ladder up was install these ladder stabilizers. Um, what this is gonna do is it's gonna help protect the gutter and fascia um, as well as the roof. Um, it's also gonna give me a more stable platform to work off of. Once my mark's made, I'll remove the pipe and the boot, which is friction fit. All right, so now that my marks are made, I'm gonna transfer these marks over for the roofing boot and make my cuts. All right, in the colder months of the year, we're gonna utilize a heat gun to heat the shingles up. Uh, it's gonna make them a lot easier to cut through. Um, it's gonna be safer for us, and uh, it's not gonna tear the shingles up quite as much. All right, now that my cut's been made to fit my roofing boot beneath the shingles, um, I'm gonna take my roofing boot and gray piece of PVC, um, get it caulked and slip beneath. Uh, one of the features about this gray pipe that we like, uh, for one, it blends into the roof a lot better. Um, and secondly, it's also more UV resistant um, than white PVC sticking out through the roof. Um, so even though there's no trees around right now, uh, we install what we call our critter guard on top of our pipe coming through the roof. Um, main purpose being how it sounds, we don't want any kind of critters like squirrels or birds um, or any kind of leaves or debris to fall inside that pipe and inside the fan eventually. Um, now that everything is secured, roofing boot is nailed down, I'm going to use my roofing sealant. Uh, I'm going to glue the shingles back down to where they were originally. Nice thing right now, we have the sun on the roof. Shingles are nice and warm, so they're gonna lay down flat when I push them down. Yeah, so speaking on placement of the pipe and on the roof, um, even though this pipe is not venting out on the highest roof line, um, there are no operational windows within at least 20 feet, maybe even more, um, of the ventilation point, which makes it feel more secure with putting it out here. <laughs> 